Want to see how I turned this into this? Hello, and welcome back to Studio Bon Bon. I'm Siobhan, and today's video is going to be a thrift flip. I am super excited about today's project. This fabric has been in my stash for over a year probably now, and I just can't wait to dig into it. So this is the shirt that I'm gonna be starting with. I thrifted this a long time ago. It is 100% linen. I did make a video last week about how to thrift for natural fibers. So if you're looking for some tips, go check that out. So you can see, um, it's not bad. I could see this being really cute paired with like a cami or a tank top, but it's just really not my style. I'm not really big on like collared shirts. I prefer more of like a minimal sleek style. So that's what we're gonna try to create today. Way back in high school, I had thrifted a cotton jersey tee and I got like the really cheap fabric paints and I painted a grid with all these different shades of purple just as a, I don't know, it just struck me one day I had this inspiration to do this and I did it. And I just remember for years afterwards, whenever I wore that shirt, I just felt like very much in my element. I loved the colors. This must have been like three years ago that I designed this. I loved the idea of this like solid background with um, a very colorful pattern on top that had a lot of variation in the color, but that's ultimately monochromatic. I think that's a really good look. So I'm thinking I want it to have a high neckline, almost like a t-shirt with a bias binding. I'm gonna have just kind of regular shoulders with kind of a loose fitting slightly cropped bodice and the sleeves i want them to go down to like mid arm and be somewhat fitted not too loose something like that and then on top of that i'm gonna embroider like a bunch of little squiggles in just a bunch of different purple shades basically like every purple color of embroidery thread that i have is gonna go on this so something kind of like that. I think this is gonna look really cool. I'm very excited. Okay, we have a lot of work to do, so let's go. So the first step is gonna be drafting this shirt. Here I have my bodice block that I made quite a while ago. Um, it's tailored perfectly to my dimensions. I made this using a tutorial here on YouTube. Um, I'll try to link it down below just in case you wanna do this yourself. There's so many videos out there for how to make a bodice block, but this is gonna be kind of my starting point. This is what the muslin looks like. It's only got one sleeve at the moment. Late last night, I had the brilliant idea to install an invisible zipper, but I kind of did it wrong and I broke the zipper. So now it doesn't fit anymore. Normally I would put that on and then I would kind of measure and pin what I want the shape to be like, but I guess I'm gonna have to kind of freehand it this time because I have to fix that zipper. So my first step was to trace out the front side of my bodice block onto a fresh new sheet of paper. I removed the darts because this is gonna be a loose fitting top and squared everything to the center line. Then I measured the circumference of my head because I needed to make sure that the neck opening was gonna be wide enough for me to slip the top on and off without having to add any additional closures at the back. I took that measurement and then used it to freehand a neckline that would be one quarter of the total circumference. Then I extended the bottom to the length that I wanted for the top and added about an inch and a half to the bottom hem. Next, I started on the sleeve. I traced it onto a fresh sheet of paper and then measured out the length that I wanted the sleeve to be. I wanted my sleeves to be less structured than my bodice block was, so I lowered the sleeve cap so the sleeves wouldn't stick straight down as much. This was actually my first time drafting sleeves from scratch, so I did a lot of back and forth until I got to a fit that I was happy with. It seems the most important thing for sleeves is that the measurement of the sleeve cap has to match the measurement for the armhole or else it won't fit. So I measured it over and over again, and then went back to the bodice and adjusted the armhole to fit the sleeve cap. Once I had the sleeves and armhole figured out, I moved on to drafting the back. The most important thing here was making sure that all the measurements matched. So the neckline had to match the front, the shoulders had to be the same width, the armhole had to match the sleeve cap, and the side seams had to be the same length as the front. And just like that, the pattern was done. 
I always do mock-ups for new patterns and I especially wanted to do one for this pattern since I didn't have enough fabric to do it over again if I messed up. I cut out all the pattern pieces with a half inch seam allowance and then created a quarter inch bias tape for the neckline. Then it was time to sew it all up. And yes, my pin cushion is a needle felted hedgehog. And here we go. So this is the mock-up. This is how it turned out. Um, I'm pretty happy with it overall. I think that it matches the design that I was trying to go for, so I'm very happy about that. I will say that having worked with this fabric before, it is very stiff, and I know that the linen is gonna have a bit of a better drape, so I'm hoping that it'll be kind of more relaxed in the final garment. I actually really love the way that the collar came out. So this is wide enough for me to easily slip it off and on, and I don't think it looks too terrible. I think maybe I'll adjust this design for a future sort of version too um, and make it a little bit deeper and narrower. But for this one, I think I'm just gonna go ahead with it. I, I like it. The fit is pretty good. It fits on the shoulders. The armpits, I think, could have been lowered a little bit because it does feel like there's a bit of like bunching of fabric. So I'll have to troubleshoot that, but it's it's okay enough to go forward with. I think I have to kill my perfectionism on this one or else I'm just not gonna get it done. So you can see um, one of the sleeves is shorter than the other and that's because I measured the fabric on the actual garment and there's only enough fabric to do this length of sleeve, but I think it's actually okay. It's not too big of a difference between this one and that one. So I think it's going to be fine. The bias binding turned out really terrible. So I'm definitely going to use a different technique in the final. Now let me just do a little turn around. So yeah, I think I'm just going to move forward with this. I'm pretty happy with it. So let's go. So I started off with a seam ripper, but the seams on this shirt were very well reinforced. So I just ended up chopping it all up. I really didn't lose that much fabric and it went a lot faster. What I was most concerned about at this point was the sleeves and if I would have enough fabric. And unfortunately, the original sleeves were too short. But no fear, I can fix this. So I took some new measurements and went back to the original pattern. I knew that as long as I could keep the length the same as the armhole, I could change the shape and it would be okay. So first I lowered the height of the sleeve cap, making sure I had enough room for the seam allowance. And then I took the bicep measurement, which is that cross section, and lowered it by an inch. And then I adjusted the entire curve to be one inch lower. This way I'd still have the same height on my sleeve cap, even though the overall length would be a little shorter. This was important for me to fix because if the sleeve cap is too short, then the sleeves will stick out rather than point down. And that would ruin the whole silhouette of my top. I used this opportunity as well to lower the armhole so that there'd be more room because that was one of the things that was bothering me in the mock-up. Oh, also I fixed the back pattern to match the new front pattern. Very important. Then with the new measurement for the armhole, I went back to my sleeve pattern and widened it on either side until it matched the armhole length. And that is how I fixed the sleeve. I moved on to testing the other pattern pieces and found that the back panel was too big to fit onto the fabric that I had. Since it was a button down shirt originally, I had to do the back in two pieces and run a seam down the middle. So the way I solved this was to split it into two separate panels so that all together the back piece would have four panels sewn together. Not ideal, but it's all I had, so I had to make it work. Then it was time to cut out all the pieces. I used a half inch seam allowance again, and all was going well, until... <sighs> I am such an idiot. So I was zoning out, having a great time, and I just realized that I cut the front in half. It was supposed to be one solid piece, and now there's not really room to do the seam allowance to even sew it down the front. So I guess it's like everything else in this project. I'm just going to have to deal with it and move on. But that's such a shame. It's going to have a seam down the front now. To make up for the lost seam allowance, I did what I did with the other one and cut a panel out of the side with the intention of patchworking it together later. 
And oops, I did it again. This should have also just been one piece. I am officially calling this my Frankenstein shirt because it's just a ton of different pieces that shouldn't be in pieces. Before doing any sewing, I did stay stitching around every piece. With linen, this is absolutely essential so that it doesn't get misshapen as you work with it. Then it was time to assemble everything together. First, I started with the front panel and sewed the two front panels together as well as the side patchwork piece. I finished all the raw edges with a zigzag stitch to prevent fraying. Next, I sewed all four pieces of the back panel. Then I sewed the front and back together at the shoulders. Before doing the side seam, I sewed the sleeves to the armhole, then sewed the side seam shut all the way up through the sleeve. I find this method is a lot easier than trying to ease in a sleeve, and the result looks just as good. To finish the neckline, I started by doing stay stitching all the way around the collar, and then assembled my quarter inch bias tape. It was quite thin, so it took a bit of patience to get it into place, but I thought it turned out pretty well. And I finished it off with a very basic rolled hem. All right, so it is actually day three of this project, but the shirt is finished. Yay! I am super happy with the way it turned out. So I think it's time for the reveal. You ready? Ta-da! I have to say, I am super happy with this. I think I really achieved the structured look that I was going for in the original design. I'm very proud of myself for the way that the sleeves turned out, considering this was my first time drafting sleeves. I was really worried that they were gonna stick out kind of like a t-shirt, but I think that adjustment that I made really worked and now they kind of point downwards a little bit more. It's good I made that armpit adjustment too because now there's more Room under the armpits, it feels a lot more comfortable. I love the way the bias binding turned out. Nice and subtle, and it's not puckering at all. Normally I do French seams, but I found that the, the zigzag stitch was fine. It's not going anywhere. The drape is definitely a lot better than it was in the muslin. I don't know if you can see, but I feel like the seams and all the patchwork and stuff that I did, or is it on this side? You can barely even see. Like, I feel like once I put the embroidery on, it's gonna cover it all up. But overall, it's got that kind of boxy, minimalist shape, which is exactly what I was going after. So yeah, I'm super happy with it. Now, the next part is embroidering. I hope this doesn't take too long, but it'll probably end up taking all day. That's the final finishing touch, and then that's it. So I did some tests here, trying out a variety of different shapes. Some of these use six threads, some of these are using only three. I went down to two for these ones, but in the end, I landed with these ones up here. It retained sort of the sketchy textured look of my original design. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. Next, I cut out all my little test pieces and just played around with the spacing until I landed on something that I thought would look good, both close up and from a distance. Then I measured it all out and marked everything to make sure that it looked even and consistent throughout the whole shirt. The seams down the center actually ended up being a great guide for centering everything. I laid out all my embroidery thread into a pattern that looked random, but that had the right amount of variation and contrast, and then began the long, arduous task of embroidering. I only filmed one of these because, quite frankly, it was boring to watch, and it was very uncomfortable to do this on camera. So it is now day five of this project. I just finished the embroidery. I was not expecting it to take that long at all. So I don't think I'll be tackling another embroidery project in the near future, but I think it was worth it. I'm really happy with the result. I am super happy with how this turned out. I think I stuck to the original design pretty well and I was able to materialize my original concept. So I'm pretty proud of it. I love the colors so much. The fit is wonderful. I'm really proud of all the finishing details and the time I took to make it nice. I feel like you really can't see the patchwork or at least that's not the first thing that your eye is drawn to. So I'm really happy with that. The sleeves are very structured. Um, as you can see, when I lift my arms, the shoulders get kind of pointy. I love the overall shape of the silhouette, but I think in the future, I might opt for a less structured sleeve and go for something more like a drop shoulder. 
It did take a little longer than I was expecting originally, but I'm okay with that. This shirt is going to last for as long as I care to wear it, so I'm okay with having put the time in to do it. Like, this is the epitome of slow fashion. It was very slow, but that's, you know, what I'm all about. So yeah, I'm super happy with it. How do you think it turned out? Would you try to do something like this? If you like this kind of thrift flip content, sewing content, um, me made wardrobe stuff, consider subscribing because I have a lot of upcoming videos that are gonna be very similar to this one. And if you don't wanna miss out on that, think about subscribing. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Bye. Say bye, Mochi. Bye.